Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Kirsten and it's a Thursday for you guys so it is going to be the start of a weekly vlog. This week I am currently reading two books. One of them I am continuing over from last week which is my audiobook which is Vita Nostra by Sergei Dychenko. I think I've pronounced that incorrectly again, sorry. This is a translated book from Russian and I was listening to it because Elias, who I will have linked below, was talking about it as one of his favourite books. I was really interested in the concept of it because it seems to have this dark fairy tale feeling to it. However, as I've been reading it, I've been finding it definitely does have that darker, creepy atmosphere, but it's really slow in paces and very repetitive. I don't know if this is going to be a book that I would actually pick up physically. I only have just over an hour left on the audiobook and I can say if it carries on the way it's going then no I wouldn't get it physically because it's just too repetitive in places. So what it's actually about is our main character called Sasha. She goes on holiday with her mum and while she's on holiday she comes across this very unusual man that starts getting her to do things that she just doesn't want to do but she has to complete the tasks as otherwise something terrible will happen. As she completes each task she starts vomiting up these gold coins and after a while when she's been doing these tasks for a few months she then gets approached by the man again and is told that she is going to be going to this unique college for special technologies and she doesn't want to go, she doesn't want any part of it but once again her hands are tied and she doesn't have a choice. So she goes and the rest of the book is about being at this school, the things that they're trying to get her to do but it is very confusing because Sasha has no idea what they want from her and I will say it does get very eerie in places, some of the things that are happening. I mean the atmosphere in it is very well done but it's so repetitive. It it's unreal. Parts of that is on purpose but some of it is just like okay this is getting a bit boring now because nothing else is happening. Like I said I've got just over an hour left and I couldn't tell you where the book is going, what's going to come from it, I have no idea. But physically I am reading A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and I'm really enjoying this. It's only a short story, it's just over 100 pages and I'm about halfway through, I'm up to the 60 page mark and I'm just really enjoying this. I've been really feeling like reading like classic literature anyway just because I do love their writing, I love everything about it and this is definitely ticking that box for me. It's so well written. I will say the writing's actually really accessible. I know some people get put off by classics because they feel like they are daunted because you're not going to understand the language but actually it's really well written and very accessible and I think although some of their mannerisms and stuff is dated for when this was written. The actual writing style is very easy to follow and this is just so much fun. This is the first book in the Sherlock Holmes series that he wrote. The only book that I've read by him was Hound of the Baskervilles which is so so good although I did read that years ago while I was in secondary school so I couldn't tell you too much what the plot line is apart from obviously the ad adaptations that have been done around it but I read that for my GCSEs in English and really fell in love with it so now I want to be going through all of the Sherlock Holmes books and reading them in order. I'm really enjoying this one. I plan on finishing it up today after work and yeah this is just reinstating my love for classics and definitely what I said last week about wanting to read more of them and I'm just finding that my reading taste at the moment is wanting that more sophisticated writing style than something like a YA fantasy book with all its tropiness. So yeah really really enjoying this and I don't think I need to tell you who Sherlock Holmes is because he he is probably one of the most famous literary detectives ever. Like there's so much. I mean in London alone Baker Street Underground Station has a wall of mural towards him. We have a Sherlock Holmes museum, tours around London, let alone all the books that have been written that have been inspired by Sherlock Holmes as well as all the films and TV series adaptations. Like if you don't know who he is I would be very surprised. But this is great and if you do like all those TV shows and the films and stuff give the books a try. They are very easy easy to read, humorous in places as well. It is very good. And that's it. Just a smaller update for this weekly vlog because I don't have much else to say really. I am going to be going off to work and we'll see what the rest of the week brings. <laughs> So 
through, I finished A Study in Scarlet, which I really did enjoy. It came out as five stars and I loved it. I thought it was really fun, really easily accessible, and it's split into two parts. So the first part is the mystery, meeting Sherlock Holmes, meeting Dr. Watson, getting to know them as characters, and also seeing how Sherlock Holmes starts solving this mystery. And then the second part of the book is finding out the motive as to why. So you get the villain's story, which I really liked and I didn't expect. I thought that was really well done and you could really understand his motive to doing that crime. I think it was very good. I really did enjoy this. And if you're not sure about classics, but you like a mystery, I would would give this a try. It was just a lot of fun. So yeah, five star read and a great start to May. Continuing on with a great start to May, I am over halfway through Near the Bone. This book is so good. That's the dust jacket, by the way. I always take these off to read because I don't want them to get damaged and it's so cool. This book is so good. So Christina Henry is an autobi author for me. I've enjoyed all of her books. She does amazing retellings which have this horror twist to it, but she's also recently been doing books that aren't retellings but still have this horror fantastical element to it which I'm really enjoying so yeah almost finished I've only got about 100 pages left and I could not put it down yesterday so I started it yesterday and I read the first 200 odd pages in one sitting it was so engrossing now I will say this is a dark read and it's an uncomfortable read at times we do have our main character Matty and she is on the, this mountain with William and she has been there for about 12 years and she can't really remember a life outside of it she doesn't really remember how she got there she just knows that that is where she lives and she is the wife to William and he is a horrible person he will hurt her for every little minor thing that she does wrong in his eyes and there is no winning no matter what decision she makes it's going to end in pain for her and that is very hard to read so please go into it aware of that because that is pretty much from the start of the book and we have this kind of mystery about how Matty got to this mountain got to this little cabin what is her past life parts of that are predictable but I don't mind that because you kind of of know that because that's not the main mystery of this book but it is something that keeps the plot flowing as to why she's there. And then alongside that you have the horror element of the book which is this very unusual creature that is slaughtering all the animals on the mountainside yet leaving them, displaying them and it's so creepy. I'm not gonna lie, parts of this book just made me cringe. It's so atmospheric. I really love the setting, you know, it's a wintry setting and you can really tell the harshness of the world that Matty is living in. I think it's really, really good. I don't know where it's gonna go from here with regards to the creature and I'm very interested because we've just found out what happened to Matty and why she is with William and yeah it is a really hard read I won't lie but I am really enjoying it and I do think it's well written it's really easy to read as well it's something that is well written with characters and atmosphere but isn't overly descriptive and yet you feel like you've got everything or at least I do so yeah really enjoying this book love the naked hardback design on it and also the black sprayed edges I think it works so well this is the Waterstones edition and I know there's another edition that I've seen that has blue sprayed edges but I actually think the black just works with this horror atmosphere and these end pages oh my gosh they're so good. I'm loving them so much. Really enjoying this book. It's a creepy one, but I really struggled to put it down. It was only because I was so tired that I actually put it down because otherwise th I could have devoured this in one sitting. I've really enjoyed it. And that's what I'm up to at the moment. I'm not listening to an audiobook yet because I am waiting for The Hobbit to become back available on script, which I think my subscription for that should be coming up in the next few days. So I want to make sure The Hobbit becomes available so I can listen to that. Also because the narrator is Andy Serskis, which I believe is the person that did the voice for Schmeagle in the films, so I'm super excited for that. Bobby is constantly saying, if I'm gonna listen to The Hobbit, it has to be that narrator, so I'm just like, you know what, of course, it's gonna be amazing. So I'm really just waiting for that, so as soon as that comes available, that's what I'll start listening to. But that's it, really, with regards to today. I've just got my chiropractor appointment this evening, and I think me and my partner are just gonna have a little wander around London, because my 
chiropractors is in central London so we're just going to have a little wander around maybe get some boba tea and this thing has been a really nice week so far and I'm enjoying both the books that I've read so far if we're off to an amazing start and I hope your month of May started off just as well I'll catch up with you when I have more to update you with quick update because I need to get to work but I have finished Near the Bone by Christina Henry. This came out as four stars. I really enjoyed the atmosphere to this book and there were some really gruesome moments. It is a bit of a darker read, a bit disturbing at times especially with what Matty has had to deal with. It really was a bit disturbing in places and if you are triggered by things like abuse, rape, I wouldn't necessarily read this. It is a good book. For a horror book it's really well done and I think Think for me this is the sort of horror that I like. It's got the right amount of atmosphere to it, it's got enough of the plot line to keep me intrigued. Though I will say Christina Henry is getting into this really annoying habit of when it finishes, it just finishes and I'm like no wait I want to know more, like I want to know what's going to happen to her and you don't get that. And I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily because I know it's kind of like how a film would end but I also just want that little bit more, even if it's just like an epilogue to show how she is a few years later, how she's doing, it would be so interesting and also there are still questions about what this creature was and in a way it's good that it doesn't get answered because again it adds to that horror aspect of it because you just don't know so it adds to the unknown but at the same time it would have been really cool to actually find out what it was. I enjoyed it, it was four stars and yeah Christina Henry remains an autobi author for me. So with that book done out the way I have started All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I love these dust jackets, I think they're beautiful. So I'm about a a third of the way through this book and I am enjoying it but I will say it's definitely more of just that simple YA read rather than anything else and at times I'm getting so frustrated with our main character because she's making really stupid decisions and I'm just like for god's sake girl if you just spoke to the others then you wouldn't be making these decisions which are going to come back to bite you on the ass later on but I do like the world, I think it is interesting. The first book, All the Stars and Teeth, we are following our main character as she is meant to perform this showing of her magic because in this world there are many different types of magic. The world is split into different islands and on each island you have a certain magic and even if you were born to say an elemental parent but you have enchantment magic, you have to leave your family and go live with the en other enchanters on their island. So it's very interesting to see how they segregate themselves like that but when when it comes to the showing of her magic which is soul magic it goes terribly wrong and now she's kind of like on the run to try and fix everything and the story progresses from there now the second book takes place straight after the first book so I would say you definitely need a recap or at least read the last couple of chapters of the first book before you go into this one just to make it that little bit easier in terms of what's going on because it really does take place straight away and it kind of takes for granted that you know exactly what's happened it is interesting but as I said I'm just a bit frustrated with our main character she really does just make stupid decisions but it's a fun light read it's one I really don't need to focus too much on but I can't see it being anything that I can go oh yeah I love it saying that I'm only 100 pages in so we have about 250 pages to go so we'll see what happens and I'm gonna hope to get this finished up over the weekend so that would be really good start to May if I can get three books finished off my TBR already and oh my gosh it was so much fun fun on Thursday it was just great so me and my partner Damien we went up to central London and it was just a lot of fun we did so much shopping and by the end of the day he was like I am so tired because <laughs> he was so much shopping but it was really great we didn't plan on doing loads of shopping but super dry had this massive sale on we just ended up just turning it into a day of shopping and it was just so much fun as you saw went to a couple of bookstores which i forgot how the waterstones near piccadilly circus has this massive classic selection it is huge and i loved it and damien's there dragging me away like come on we've got other places to go and then of course we went to forbidden planet which he actually likes going to as well so that's a good one but yeah it was just a lot of fun I really enjoyed the day and it was just nice to actually be able to do that when we haven't been able to for such a long time so but I have work today I should stop talking and just go to work really <laughs> I'm tired. 
tired but we are going to wrap up this vlog. So I am still reading All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace and I am enjoying this. I have about just over 100 pages left to go which hopefully I'll get that finished up this evening although I've got a lot I need to do this evening so we'll see. I am enjoying it. I predict that it's going to come out as three stars because while I am enjoying the story because it is an easy read, it's just a fun YA read and it does have very good representation of anxiety in this. I say very good representation, I don't actually have anxiety so I can't comment on how well it's been done but it is something which I do think a lot of books within fantasy worlds don't acknowledge is the anxiety and the fallout of some of the horrible things that our characters go through. So the fact that this second book is focusing on the fact that our main character is struggling from what she went through at the end of the first book, I do appreciate. At the same time I still find this isn't going to be too memorable for me personally. We'll see what happens though because I've still got a third of the book left to go and that may change my mind and my star rating on it but for that you'll have to see next week's vlog. I'm also currently listening to two audiobooks so from none to do. The first audiobook I started was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and I have managed to get my hands on the Andy Serkis audiobook which is through Scribd and I am loving it. It is amazing and I would say that honestly this is a book that I have tried reading physically a couple times but just struggled each time so I definitely think audiobook is the way to go for me and I am loving Andy Serkis. He has this amazing way of bringing all the characters to life. I love the fact that he sings all the songs and does it really really well. It's just like you're there with them. It's so so good and of course the bits where you see Gollum in this is just Mm, so good because obviously he is the voice actor for Gollum and he does an amazing job with it so loving this audiobook. I've listened to the first hundred pages of this and yeah it is very good although I will say it is very different to the film so I've only ever seen the films of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and I knew that obviously they must have added in lots of stuff to The Hobbit to make this one little book into three full films but in a way I kind of like what they added in it really adds another level to the story. Now this is more of a children's book this was originally written for children and I do like it but you can definitely see where the film has added things in and also I'd say that Bilbo Baggins doesn't have as big of a moment in the book as he does in the film or at least so far he doesn't. So for instance the part where our company meets the trolls and it's Bilbo that's confusing the trolls to keep them alive until the sun comes up but in the book it's not Bilbo at all. Bilbo's just cowering in a tree and I'm like but that's not Bilbo. Like Bilbo's definitely got more behind him than that. So it's like little things like that which is why honestly I don't like watching the film first because it does colour your opinions of things and I am enjoying the book but I'd have to say I don't think I would manage it physically. Definitely the audiobook is the way to go and obviously by the time I finished the audiobook I might really love the way it goes but this is about as far as I've ever got with it physically so I'm excited to see how it's going to continue and like I said really enjoying the audiobook so thank you so much Bobby for bringing that to my attention because it is freaking amazing and my second audiobook is Holland the Soulless by Daneely Day she sent me this audiobook in exchange for an honest review and so far I actually quite like it it is a fantasy romance it does have dragons and stuff in which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like our characters, I like the banter between them and I'm really excited to see where it continues. So I've listened to I think about the first six chapters. Yeah so far I really like it. We have our main character and she is a daughter to this really powerful man but he's always never really appreciated her. She's always just been this person that doesn't do enough in his opinion and now her father has made these stupid mistakes and so he is marrying her off to save face and yet she's doing it, she's going along with it, she's proven that she is the good daughter and that she can do all of this stuff but on her way to meet her betrothed she is taken by this dragon rider and brought into this completely different society and he has taken her for his prize for looking after the lowlanders from these terrible creatures and she's just like yeah all right then 
what the hell are you on about, you know? And she's she's so fiery at times. She is so annoyed and self-righteous and it's just a fun time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually quite enjoying the audiobook of this. It is just fun if you're just looking for a fantasy romance that's got banter and it is going to be almost like an enemies to lovers, but only on the part of our female main character because our male main character, Holland, he is very much like, you are my only, you are the person I am going to protect and look after and nothing bad will ever happen to you and he you can fully see how much he reveres her whereas she's very much like I'm gonna stab you which is just fun I'm intrigued I'm enjoying it I think it's just that fact that it is something so simple and fun and there is enough banter between everyone that I'm really enjoying. So yeah, so that's where I'm at with three different books at the moment, although it is time to wrap up this weekly vlog. So I'll be carrying on with those three next week and we'll see how they go. But for now, I hope you've all had an amazing week. Do let me know what you have been up to. And as usual, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up and subscribe. My social media links will be linked below and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.